Hello, welcome to RC Video Reviews. In today's video, we're gonna take a look at some hardware from FlySky. Specifically, I've got a TR8B receiver. This is an enhanced receiver running AFH DS3 protocol and iBus2 output. And with that technology, we've got some really cool sensors to check out today. So we're gonna take a look at the receiver and a handful of sensors that FlySky sent me. And before I get into the content, I do need to let you know the video is sponsored by FlySky who sent me these sensors for review but my opinions are my own. I'm not under any obligation to provide a pre-look at my content before I post it. So with that said, let's get into the content. We'll start out by taking a look at the little TR-8B receiver. This is actually an eight channel receiver. So there's six pins on this side and six on this side. You do have to solder one of the sets of pins on. It'll come out of the factory with one set on there for you. And then if you want to use the additional pins on the other side, you've got to solder those on. They do come in the box. So once you solder those on, you'll have two rows of six on each side. So it's one, two, three, four channels. And then when you flip it over, you've got two more rows of six on each side, five, six, seven, and eight. Additionally, these pins can be configured to output serial streams like SBUS, iBus, and iBus2. And that's how I've got this one set up in order to connect sensors to it. We'll get into that part in just a minute. The other really interesting thing about these enhanced receivers that I was fascinated about is this BVD cable. BVD in FlySky parlance stands for battery voltage detect. And all you have to do is take that little pin and connect it to a positive lead on your battery and you'll get your voltage reported via telemetry on the receiver. Really awesome solution because there's no extra hardware and it comes already working on the receiver. You do have to solder the little wire onto a pad on the receiver in order for it to work. And it does look like there's some little divisor resistor in there in order to get the voltage right. But this BVD pin is good for up to 70 volts. That's what I'm talking about. That's one of the things I really like about FlySky. 70 volts, one pin and it comes with the receiver. That's pretty awesome. To bind the FlySky TR8B receiver to the transmitter, go into the bind settings for your radio, click on bind setting and choose fast eight. And then all you have to do from there is hit bind. You'll get a little warning saying this is not for older style receivers. You can dismiss that and hit got it. And once the radio is in bind mode, simply connect power. And when you do that, you don't even have to press a button. You just connect power, the light will blink rapidly, and then you'll get a solid light, and that means it's bound. So that's all there is to it. What ends up happening on this receiver is every time you power it on, it'll look for a bind. If it doesn't find one within a few like milliseconds, it actually goes into a search mode and it'll look for the radio to bind too. So make sure you have your transmitter on when you power the receiver on and you won't have any problems. So that's how you bind it. Now let's take a look at some of the configuration options you have on the transmitter. If you hit the back button and then go under custom port protocol, you'll notice on the left hand side, there's a new port port A and new port B. I set both of those up for iBus 2 and that allows me to connect sensors to the NPA and MPB tabs on this receiver. You can also choose SBUS or PWM output. So if you just wanna use the new port channels for PWM, and you can enable MPA and B for PWM, that gives you eight PWM outputs. If you set them for iBus 2, that means you'll get six PWM outputs and two serial stream inputs or outputs. Okay, that's it for how to bind the receiver. The next thing we'll do is take a look at sensors. The first sensor we'll check out is the BVD sensor itself. Remember, single wire and you solder it to a pad on the receiver and you're ready to go. That's all you've got to do. I'll bring up the sensor list on the radio and scroll to the bottom and you can see BVD voltage right there on the screen. I know it might be small print. Don't worry, I'll bring it up in just a minute so you can see it. The next thing you have to do is take your positive lead and connect it to one of your balance leads on your battery. So I've got a little battery on my test stand here and you can connect to any of them. So if I connect to the very first pin, we should get one cell worth of voltage. And that's what I see on the screen. 3.8 volts is what's on the screen there. So hopefully you can see that there's 3.8 volts. Or if you wanna get the entire battery voltage, you connect it to the very last pin on the very end, and that will give you the voltage for the entire pack. So there we've got 11.4 volts, which is what I've got on this battery. So this is a three cell battery, and remember, this sensor will take up to 70 volts. I really like that feature, it's one of my favorite things. 
The next sensor I'll show you is the Flysky IBS-01. This is an RPM sensor. It's an optical sensor. It needs to be placed within about 30 to 50 millimeters of the device you're trying to measure. I've got my test stand set up so we can take a look at the RPM meter on this thing and see how it works. So very simple device. You simply plug it into your receiver and that's it. There's nothing else. You just have to aim this optical sensor at the thing you're trying to measure. All right, now that I've got the RPM sensor set up on my test stand, I'm gonna spool the motor up just a little bit get it spinning a little bit and then we're just going to set it aside and we'll take a look at what the radio is showing us so it looks like 1890 rpm there on the screen and if i spool the motor up just a little bit more there's 2200 rpm and then down to zero and that wraps up the Flysky IB-S01 sensor. Real easy to connect to your receiver. You just remember you gotta connect it to an iBus 2 port and that's it. Put it within 30 to 50 millimeters of the thing you're trying to measure and get it spinning. Nice little device. The next sensor we'll check out is the Flysky IBG01. This one's actually pretty cool. It's a GPS unit. So it does not do return to home or anything like that. It's just a sensor to let you know what's going on with the craft or the model. So it has the ability to track your altitude, your position. It even has an attitude in indicator on the radio. And I'll show you that in just a minute. I'll put a link to the specifications of the GPS unit in the description if you want to check out the details, but what you'll probably want to know is for satellite system supported, it's GPS and BIDOW, B-E-I-D-O-U. Setup is much the same. You just take your AFH DS3 iBus 2 receiver, plug in the sensor, and you should see LEDs on the GPS. With our GPS connected to the iBus 2 port on the receiver, we can click on our sensor button on the radio and you'll see the sensor shows up for height, distance, and velocity. I'm gonna show you something really cool on the radio that's built in. If you click on the home screen and then highlight the GPS sensor, you'll see this Latin long coordinate box. When you click on that, you'll see it brings up the attitude indicator and you can manipulate that attitude indicator by rolling the GPS around and of course by pitching it fore and aft. In addition to the attitude indicator, you also get a compass heading, a heading angle, your lat long, your speed, distance, and your altitude. So a nice little sensor if you wanna gather some data about how your model is flying. And it's fairly lightweight, coming in at around 21 grams. The next sensor we'll check out is the Flysky IBA-01. This is an altitude meter or a variometer. It's got a range up to 8,000 meters, so between negative 1,000 and 8,000 meters. And of course, it works the same as all the others. You simply plug it into an iBus 2 port on your receiver, and when you do that, you look at your sensor list, and it'll show up right there. In my case, it's at the bottom of the list, and it says height-PR, and it puts me at negative 30 feet. So a nice tiny sensor if you need a variometer for your radio, there you go, a Flysky IB-A01 altimeter. The final sensor we'll check out is the Flysky IB-T01. This is a temperature sensor, so it's got a little thermistor that you can attach to whatever surface you wanna measure the temperature on, and it has a range of negative 20C to plus 200C. Same connection method, you simply connect it to your iBus 2 port on the receiver, and once you've got that done, you can bring up your sensor list on the radio, scroll down to the bottom, and you can see a temperature right there of 81.4 degrees, and if I put my hands on it and hold that little thermistor and pinch it, we'll see it warm up real quick to about 94 degrees. So if you need to measure temperature on your model, Flysky's got you covered with the Flysky IBT-01. Now I know one of the burning questions I'll get because I do so much work with Edge TX and RadioMaster is when will these sensors work on a RadioMaster TX16S? And all I can tell you is that AFH DS3 is coming to Edge TX very soon. So stay tuned on the channel. As soon as I can, I'll produce a video showing you what sensors work on Edge TX. But if you've got a firmware that supports AFH DS3 and iBus 2, you should work right out of the box. These are AFH DS3 and iBus 2 compatible. I'd like to say thanks to Flysky for sending me the TR-8B receiver to check out. If you'd like to get one for yourself, I'll put links in the description on where you can get them. Unfortunately, there aren't a whole lot of US-based options to get these enhanced receivers. I have asked Flysky about that and asked them to see if they can get them stocked in the US. You probably can find some on Amazon, but you check the shipping time, you're gonna see a little bit of lead time on shipping. And I also know you can get these on AliExpress. 
So unfortunately, as of right now, it does take a little bit of time to get your hands on these, but I can tell you if you've got a little bit of time and you're flying with AFHDS3 as a protocol, these enhanced receivers are pretty cool. I hope you liked the content, and if you did, smash that thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you know new material hits the channel. YouTube should recommend another video for you right about now. That's all I've got for today. Take it easy and get out there and fly something.